All right, so the recording started. Um, as I said, good afternoon, everybody. Just uh, first a quick reminder, uh, your homework number six is due tonight. Uh, you gotta have it in by 11.59. Does anybody have any last minute questions on, on the homework they'd like to see me do? All right, um, just make sure you have the homework um, homework completed and turned in by 11.59 tonight. Uh, what about question one, Emmanuel? I'm kind of confused. Hold on one second. Uh, could you say that again? I had my volume down low. Like I said, like, I'm kind of confused the question one. Oh yeah, it was, it was due Tuesday, wasn't it? Ha! Oh no, my no, gosh. No, um, Yes, I'm so sorry. I don't even know what day it is, honestly. It's Thursday, right? Oh my gosh. Yes, that was due Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, it was already due. You know what? To be honest with you guys, you know, I'm having, I'm struggling to remember. Um, yeah, Liliana, did you email me about meeting after class? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll stick around after class. Um, I'm sorry. So question number six, Emmanuel, did you still have a question on question number six or do you want me to go talk to do, do, um, uh, do, are you talking um, about homework number seven? Um, yeah, like seven. Yeah, sorry about that. So yes, homework number six was due Tuesday. Sorry, I forgot what day it was. Uh, as you can tell, you know, having a, having a young child at home runs circles around your mind. So homework number seven I posted. This is due... Um, do next Thursday. Sorry about that. So let me start over again. Um, the homework number seven is your final homework. And the big thing about homework number seven is that um, it's not due um, at 1159 next Thursday. It's due prior to the start of class next Thursday. Okay. The reason being is, is after you submit your um, exam number four next week, I'm going to try to get final grades done that Thursday. Okay. So you got to have this in earlier. Okay, so sorry about that, Emmanuel. Um, so you were asking how to set up this first one, right? Yes. Okay. So let me just. Okay, so it looks like this. This is the this is problem number one. Okay. So according to the Department of uh, Housing and Human Services, the mean number of phone calls per day in the United States per capita, that's on average, that's what per capita means. Um, before cell phones, people were making 2.8 phone calls per day. Okay. A researcher believes that the mean, so that's the per capita number of calls per day per capita is higher today. So the word higher, uh, this is going to be a hypothesis test. So what, um, what type of test does the word higher imply? And then I'll answer the other questions in the chat in a second. Yep, uh, it's a right tailed because it's greater than. All right, the researcher, sorry for a little bit of a typo there, samples, so you're, this is what you're given. N is equal to 30 individuals and ask them to keep track of the number of calls that they made on a certain day. The mean was 3.1, so you're given X bar. At the 0 0.05 level of significance, so you're given alpha, is there evidence to support the researcher's claim? And this says assume the population standard deviation sigma is equal to 0 0.8 calls per day. Okay, now Manuel, what what was giving you the most trouble about this? How like um the way um like when you said um, um assume the population standard deviation for the number um of calls per day days in zero point eight, then like how to like set it? That was my problem. Sure. Like, set the situation like. Sure. Let me just help set up. Let me just help set up the test, and then I'll show you how to use it in your calculator. Okay. Okay. And then I'll let you guys work it out from here. Okay. So step one, this is the hardest part for people, is you set up the test. Um, 
So we're going to start, you have to define what the parameter is. Okay. And what we're looking at here is the mean phone calls per day. And Emmanuel, I'm sorry, I'm just going to mute your mic or whoever mic is going just to get the background noise off. Uh, mean phone calls per day after cell phones were introduced. Okay. So then we all said it was a, a greater than, so it's a right tail test. So the null is gonna be mu is equal to something and the alternative is gonna be greater than something. So we need to figure out what numbers to put here, okay? Um, does anybody know what numbers we'll put here or have a guess? Well, what was the mean number of phone calls before cell phones were invented? Okay, yeah, it was 2.8. And so what we want to see is like, no way, no way. It's good. Since cell phones are around, people got to call more often. So we're looking to show evidence that it's greater than 2.8. And we'll start with the assumption that it hasn't changed, that it's still 2.8. So then from here, you're going to use your trusty calculator. Um, and it's going to be, because you're given sigma, you're going to use stat. You're going to go over to tests. And this is Z test, number one. So then use the stats. Tests. And then you're going to use option number one, which was Z tests. And then, for example, like question number two on your homework, you're going to use T tests. And then question number three on your homework, you're going to use one dash prop Z test, which we're going to learn today. Okay. Does that help get you started, Emmanuel? Yes. Okay. All right. Good, good. All right, so there was a question in the chat then next about like, is the final exam spit over two days? No, it's just Thursday. So Tuesday, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a review for it. I'll spend all day, all day class period on Tuesday just doing a prep for you. All right, does anybody have any other questions? Final? I'm sorry, go ahead. Exam four is the final? Yeah, there is no like final, final exam. There's just exam number four. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the one thing that um, if you read the syllabus, I drop your lowest exam score, except among exam number four. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Yes, Professor. Sure. Yeah. So for the homework seven, you said we need to um, include every step. Yeah. Um, so is this step, is that for the, the, the calculation step or? So the, what you would do is like, um, you'd write step one and then write it out. Step two, you'd say level of significance. Step, okay. step three, you would say the critical value and then what the calculator tells you. And step four, you'd say the p-value and then what the calculator tells you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. All right, all we're gonna to do today is basically four more examples so that you, so that everybody could see, you know, hit this stuff home so that it's makes sense for you for your homework. All right. All right, any other questions? Okay. So again, my apologies for forgetting what day it was. Um, when you're not sleeping much at night, it's very easy to, to forget. Um, okay. so. Uh, after class today, you'll be able to do the three problems for homework number seven. So homework number seven is only three problems. So it should, really shouldn't take you too long. Uh, what I highly encourage you to do is after class today, start homework number seven. Okay, start it. And then when you come to class on Tuesday, ask me any questions that are giving you trouble. Okay. All right. So just as some announcements, I know I've said this before already, but it, um, Homework number seven now posted. This is due Thursday, 1217. And this is prior to the start of class. Okay. And again, no late assignments will be accepted.
Okay, none. All right, and then you'll also have your exam number four on Thursday, and it'll be just like any other exam day. We'll come in, we'll start the Zoom, and I'll be here to answer any questions people have, okay? But it'll be exactly like the other ones, open notes, use whatever you need for it. Okay, so last class, this is what we were doing. Last class, we were doing hypothesis testing for a mean. And there were two types. There was one when sigma is known. And there was one type when sigma is unknown. Okay. And basically what, what th this means is you, you're going to have to choose between two different options in the calculator. Okay. We saw when sigma is known, it's, it's the z-test option in the calculator. Okay. And when sigma is unknown, what we saw last class was it was just the t-test in the calculator. Okay, so that's the subtle difference for this. Okay, very, very subtle difference. So uh, I wanna just do one more example problem. Um, and I'm not gonna tell you if it's a Z test or T test and we're gonna have to figure it out. Okay, when we go, go through the problem. So is everybody okay if I go to see our first problem for today? And have handy your, your graphing calculator, okay? Because we're gonna use it a bunch today. All right, so here's the problem. This, this has to do with credit scores, okay? So the Fair Isaac Corporation, the FICO credit score, okay? Is used by banks and other lenders to determine whether someone is a good credit risk, okay? So, you know, you have to get your credit score pulled whenever you take out a loan, basically, right? Like if you wanna get a car loan or a home loan, you've gotta get your, your credit card. Your, your, your credit score. And then the FICO score is one of the credit card or one of the credit scores for people. Okay, so scores range, the lowest credit score somebody could have is a 300 and the highest you can have is an 850, okay? With the score of 720 or more indicating that a person is good credit risk, okay? So 720 or more, good credit. All right, so what an economist wants to do, an economist wants to determine whether the mean FICO score is lower than the cutoff of 720. Okay, so basically what this economist wants to do, the economist, she wants to determine if the mean is lower than 720. So the mean FICO score of all people in the United States is lower than 20. lower than 720. Okay, so basically what she wants to say is, on average, do Americans have bad credit? Okay, that's what she's, that's what she's looking to investigate. Okay, so she finds a random sample of 100 people. Okay, so this is what you're given. And from those 100 people, the mean FICO score, X bar, was 703, and it had a standard deviation of 92. Okay, so as I've written that, okay, is that a population standard deviation or a sample standard deviation that's listed right there? Because this is like a question that'll look like on your final. So you have to, you have to know. Alyssa, you got it exactly right. Yeah, like, look, look here. Look at the subtle difference in the, the, the problem here. The first one, assume the population standard deviation. I literally tell you that, okay? So when I just say, oh, from a sample, the mean was this and the standard deviation was this, it's S. So it was 92, okay? So when you see this, are we gonna use Z test or T test to solve this now? Yep. You're gonna have to use the T test in your calculator, all right? So can the economist conclude that the mean FICO score is less than 720? And I tell you, use an alpha is equal to 0 0.05 level of significance, okay? All right, so this is all you need, all right, to do, to do this problem, all right, these, these things right here. So what I'm gonna show you next is what you have to write in your homework for me, okay? Just so everyone's clear. Uh, let me know when I can go to the 
go to the next slide. Everybody good? I can. Bleski says I can. Anybody else need me to stay? Okay. All right. So you're going to have to write out all these five steps on your homework. Okay. When you do this problem. So step one involves two things. You need to define the parameter. Okay. So we're talking about a mean. So we're going to let mu equal what? It's the mean what? What, what, what average are we investigating for this problem? Yeah, it's the mean FICO score. Yep, it's the mean credit score. So we're gonna let mu equal mean FICO score in the United States. And going back, um, is this gonna be a right-tailed, left-tailed, two-tailed test? And how do you know? Like what's the key word in here that tells me what type of test this is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see the less than? That tells me it's gonna be left. Yep. So when I go to set up my test, it's gonna be mu is equal to something versus no way. No way, the average is less than that number, All right? Um, I don't know, this is, I guess this is, this tends to be like the hardest thing. Like what number am I gonna put there? What do I want to show evidence that it's less than? And I'll go back. Yeah, I want to show evidence that it's less than 720, that on average people don't have good credit. So if I want to show evidence that it's less than 720, I'll start with the null hypothesis that it is 720, okay? Level of significance, like the level of significance. I did that for you in the problem. You will always be given that, okay? Always, always, always. All right, so the next thing, steps three and four, your calculator does for you, okay? All right, and you're gonna use the option, you're gonna click the stat button. You're gonna scroll over to tests. And you want, in this case, option number two, you want t-test, right? So let's grab our trusty calculator, okay? You're gonna press the stat button. You're gonna scroll over to tests and you want t-test right here. Option number two. Okay, am I gonna select data or, or do I have the summary statistics for this problem? Yep, scroll over to stats. Yep, because I gave you the summary stats. Now you just need to plug in these four things, all right? Mu sub zero, okay? That's the 720, that's the value you put in the null, okay? X bar, I'm gonna go back a slide real quick. X bar was 703. The standard deviation was 92. And look, I talked to 100 people, 100 right there. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to select and make sure that your null matches this one right here. So then you're just going to scroll down to calculate. And how many people see this output on their, on their calculator? I got one. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody need, me, need to see me do it again or is everybody good? I'm more than happy to walk through it again. All right, so this first thing here, this T is equal to negative 1.848 when I round it to three decimal places, that's your test statistic, negative 1.848. The P-value, 
is this right here. So it's 0 0.034 when I round it to four decimal places. So 0 0.034. So now you just need to figure out if you're going to reject or fail to reject the null. What do we think? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now ask you now just, just tell me this. We are going to reject the null and why? What is our p value? Yep, All right. because the p value is less than the level of significance. Okay, so when you reject the null, okay, this is what's happening, okay? You're saying that the evidence supports the alternative statement. So evidence suggests that the mean FICO score is less than 720. Okay, so on average, uh, consumers in the United States do not have good credit. That's what this is saying, so it's unfortunate. All right. And just so we're clear, if we were to fail to reject the null, what we would what, what we would saying is that evidence does not support the alternative. That's that's the, the flip side of this coin. All right, what do you uh, what do you think? Think you could handle one of these on the last exam? Sure. <laughs> Uh, two words I hate to hear, sure and fine. Uh, yeah. As a married man, those are the words you don't want to hear. So are we going to be, do we're going to move on, Daniela, what we're going to do is I'm going to move on to uh, the next topic. And then when we get together on Tuesday, I'm going to do, um, could uh, do a review. So we're going to be doing more hypothesis testing examples. It's just slightly different in the next one. Okay, but we'll, I'll spend a whole day reviewing for this. Okay, so what if this will look like um, on the test? It'll be a little different. So what will happen on the test is, um, so you'll get a problem, right? This is just so we're, I'll go back just to show you. So you'll see this at the at the start of the problem. Okay, and then what it'll say, question one or part one of this problem will say, select the correct hypothesis test. And that'll be a multiple choice. I'll have all the hypothesis tests set up and you'll have to select the right one. And then the second part of this question will say, what's the p-value? and it'll be a fill in the blank. You'll have to type in the p-value you get. And then question three will be, what's your conclusion? And it'll be multiple choice. It'll be, um, I reject the null because of this. I failed to reject the null because of this. And there'll be four options you'll have to choose from. Okay, and it'll be really tricky. You'll have to pay attention to the wording, okay? Does that help how this will be set up on the test, Dolesky? Okay. And I'll be, you know, and we'll be on Zoom, no problem. We'll be on Zoom. Uh, so you guys, you know, everybody can ask me questions as we go through it, if you, if you struggle or get stuck, okay. All right, I get good vibes. I think you'll all do great. Just rely heavily on your calculator. Calculator, calculator, every single problem you do on the final, most of them, except for, you know, setting up the test. It's just like, use the calculator, use the calculator. Calculator is your best friend. Okay. 
All right, are we ready for our final topic of the class? I hope so. So here it is, hypothesis testing. So everything we've just done now for a population proportion. Okay, this is it, we, we made it, all right? This is like the long, yep, I can go back for a second, yep. This was like the longest semester ever, but we, but we finally did it, right? You know, just because 2020 has felt like it's lasted 15 years. Okay. I mean, it has, right? Like, what a year living through history. Okay. All right, so we made it. Right. You should all be you should all be very proud of yourselves. It's been a it's been a crazy semester. No, no matter how how it how how it turns out, it's just just been so weird. I never thought I'd say this, but I think I actually I miss driving into work and getting out of the house. Ugh, okay. So what? This hypothesis testing for a population proportion, it's all it is, is, is a, um, it's just a hypothesis test for a different parameter. Okay. So it's just a hypothesis test for the parameter P. Instead of the parameter mu. Okay, so we're just going to do a hypothesis test on, oh, I think the proportion of whatever has gone up or the proportion of whatever has gone down. Okay, that's, that's, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the five step process. Um, and we're just going to rely super heavily on the calculator again for all of this. Okay. That, what do you mean that's unlike me to show you how to do it? Because I usually show you how to do it by hand first. I thought about it, but it's just like, it's just, I don't know. Can I, can I, I'll be honest, I, I hope, I know this is recorded, but it's just like, it's the end of the semester. My son is not sleeping at night again. It's just like, I hope that's okay. Yeah, the doing it by hand sometimes like it, it just it's just a layer of confusion and, and this topic can be confusing enough. So we're just going to stick right with the calculator and go from there. Um, okay, so one of the big things about that um, there are two different things for this test. Okay. All right, so two different steps in the process. First off, step one is different. Okay, you'll notice that, and we're gonna be using P's instead of uh, mu's here, okay? So you're still gonna have your two-tailed tests, your left-tailed test and your right-tailed test, but instead of saying mu is equal to a number, it's gonna say, oh, we think the population proportion is equal to some number, okay? So this P sub zero is the assumed value of the population mean instead of the, um, you know, mu sub zero instead of whatever we thought it was before. It's just gonna be some proportion. And then the other thing that's different is step two. Okay, or excuse me, um, step three. The test statistic is different. All right, but the good news here is, is the calculator will just solve this for us. For us, sorry. Okay, the calculator is just going to solve it for us, us, not use. Okay, so don't get too bogged down um, when you see the val the test statistic next time. I'm going to show you how we're going to work through it with our calculator and how we'll write it down. And I promise you, it's 
you know, when, after you see three examples of this, is is that I think this stuff is 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 actually easier than the mean, the problem for the mean. Okay, I really really do. All right, is everybody okay if I move on? Anybody need me to stay on this slide for a second? Okay. All right, so here are the five-step process for testing a proportion is the p-value approach. And you'll notice that it is um, the same exact five steps, okay? There's just slightly, slightly different notation here. Okay, so step one, the first thing we're gonna do is define the parameter, okay? This is gonna be let P equal whatever we're investigating, okay? Uh, the proportion of whatever, da, 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 da. Then you're gonna have to set up the test, okay? So there's gonna be a left-tailed test as you saw on the previous slide, right-tailed, and then there's two-tailed, okay? So left tail test is we're gonna, we think the proportion has gone down. So we're gonna set P equal to a number and the alternative will be no way the proportion is less than that. Right tail test will be the opposite. We'll start with P is equal to a number and then we're gonna say, wait a second, no way, no way. P is greater than that number. It's gone up, it's increased. And two tail test, as you saw on the previous slide, you'll start with P is equal to a number and the alternative will be no way, no way. It's it's different. It's it's changed somehow. Okay. Level of significance. Alpha will be equal to either 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or 0 0.10. And this will be given. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to compute the test statistic. Okay test statistic, not statistics, okay? So there's three things in here. There's P hat, you see here, which is the um, uh, sample proportion. P sub zero is the assumed population proportion. And N is just the sample size. Okay, so our test statistic, you'll note as it's Z sub zero. Okay, so this gets related to the normal curve. Which that means is that I could show you how to do the P, find the P value by hand by using the normal CDF function on your calculator, but we're just gonna skip that. Okay, step four, you're gonna find the p-value, okay? And the good news is, is that both of these options right here are done in your calculator. So if you just grab your calculator, I just wanna show you the, what the options are ahead of time, okay? Just so you can see. So you're gonna press the stat button always, and you're gonna scroll over to tests. And when we were doing confidence intervals for a Z, we were scrolling all the way down and doing one dash prop Z interval for a confidence interval. But now we wanna do a hypothesis test. So it's this number option number five that we're always gonna use for this. It's one dash prop Z test, one dash prop Z test. So is the stat button. We're scrolling over to tests. And then it was option number five. One dash prop Z test. And you will see that what you input is, in, it's like even easier than, um, uh, than the, the stuff for the mean. That's like less numbers to put in. Then step five is your conclusion, okay? So again, you can reject the null. This is when the p-value is less than the level of significance.
And then you can fail to reject the null. And this is when the p-value is greater than the level of significance. Okay. And as it's always been like step one is the hardest part. And then once you like see the pattern and how it's done, like your calculator just solves the rest of it for you. And it's, and it ends up just being super straightforward, super straightforward. Okay. Um, who's ready for me to go on? Does anyone need me to stick around for a bit? I'll wait, yeah, no problem. And if it's okay with everybody, and I hope it is, um, we're gonna work through the break today um, and end a little early, um, if that's okay with everybody. So no break today, we'll just go straight through and, and get done a little early. Does anybody have a problem with that? Okay. My son went down right for a nap right before class. So I'm hoping to, uh, thanks, and I'll move on now. Uh, Get, get as much done before he enters freak out mode when he wakes up. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so this one here. Um, according to a 2010 Department of Education report, 30% of adults aged 25 years or older, right, had a bachelor's degree or higher. Okay, so this was in 2010. So I always make this mistake. A researcher, not a research, <laughs> all right, wants to conduct a test to see if the proportion of individuals who have a bachelor degree or higher has increased since then. Okay, so I've, I, for this first one, I've even underlined it. When you hear the word increased, okay, what type of test does that imply? Yep, right tail test. All right, so this researcher says, oh, you know, that was 10 years ago. People are going back to college even more and more today, even over just the last 10 years. So to conduct the test, the researcher samples. So look, I'm even telling you, this isn't normal how I would normally write this, but this first one I wanted to highlight it. Okay, samples. So you're given that the researcher sampled 1,000 people, all right, age 25 years or older, and finds that 320 of them have a bachelor's degree or higher. So from this, you could actually calculate the sample proportion p hat, okay? Um, what, does anybody remember the formula for p hat? Yep, just x divided by n. So it's just 320 divided by 1,000. Which is 0.32 or 32 percent. Okay, so so her sample is you know it's a little it's higher. Okay, so at the 0 0.05 level of significance, all right, is there sufficient evidence to suggest the proportion has increased? So I'm also giving you alpha. Okay, in your calculator, okay. The two things you really need are X and N. Once you have X and N, all right, um, it's a piece of cake, okay? So I know this seems silly to say, but like a lot of times the common question I get is, is like, how do I know if it's a test for a proportion or a test for a mean, okay? Whenever you see something with a percentage in it, okay, you're, you're just gonna know it's a test for a proportion. Okay, always, always, always.
Is everybody good if I move on or let me stick around a little bit here? All right, I'm gonna get that. Oh, yep, I'll wait, no problem, no problem. So look, this is, this is exactly like problem number three on your homework for this week. Okay. So, uh, you know, you're going to see, I have three examples picked out. Okay. Um, possibly, yep. Uh, one example for each type of test, but let's, let's see. And so what you're going to have to write are these steps. Okay. On your homework when you just go to solve this. Okay. So let's test to see if there's sufficient evidence that the proportion of adults, you know, 25 years or older who have a bachelor's degree has gone up since, since 2010. Okay. So we're gonna define the parameter. Okay, I'll do that in a second. And then also when you go to set up the test, I've, I'm sorry, was it a right-tailed, left-tailed, or two-tailed test again? What was it again? Yeah, okay. Okay, so what proportion are we investigating here? The proportion of what? You know, so for this first one here, when you define the parameter, you don't put a number in, okay? It's like, what, 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 what proportion are we investigating? Like, let me just go back for a second. Like even here, let mu equal the mean FICO score because that's what we're investigating. So for this problem, what are we investigating? The proportion of people who have what? Yep, and then here's where you have to be even more specific. Um, we know what it was in 2010, so we're looking to see if it's gone up since then. So we're gonna let P be the proportion of 25 um, years or older who have a bachelor's degree or higher okay and now here's the next question i'm going to go back for uh what do we want to see that it's it's higher than what percent what proportion so what was it in 2010 okay so what we want to see then is that it's greater we want to show evidence that it's increased that it's gone up so we just have to make sure to always put this as a decimal okay because it's a proportion not a percentage okay so we want to show evidence that it's gone up that it's greater than 30 percent so we'll start with the null assumption that it hasn't changed that it's still 30 percent so i'm just going to note that change to a decimal All right, once you have this, the problem, like, the problem literally just kind of like falls into place. The level of significance, alpha. It's 0 0.05. Okay. Now we're going to compute the test statistic and the p-value. So everybody grab that trusty TI calculator that never lets you down. Okay, like when you need a ride to the airport or something, it's always there for you. That was a bad joke, but I hope some of them, thank you for the one laugh. Okay, two laughs, I appreciate it. Three, wow, killing it. All right, so let's, whenever you have a proportion, we're gonna hit the stat button on our calculator. We're gonna scroll over to tests. And what option was it I said for the, this problem? 
Yeah, it's option number five. For whenever you have a test test one proportion, you're gonna scroll down to option number five. And this is what you should see. Okay, no matter, there's no like select data or select stats, there's just this screen. So even if you have a TI-83, do you see something very much like this? Okay. Okay, so P sub zero, okay? P sub zero is whatever you have up here in the null, okay? And this is why you have to make sure it's a, per, per, a proportion decimal. So 0 0.30, okay? Now you're gonna go down here to X, okay? That's how many people said they had a college degree in the sample, okay? How many people said they had a bachelor's degree or higher? It's 320. What's my sample size? How many? Yep, a thousand. And then you just have to make sure that you match this. You got to scroll over and make sure you match it for a right tailed test here. Okay. So I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to scroll down to calculate. How many people see this? All right, I'm just gonna write this down just so we're clear what, what we did, okay? So in calculator, you went the stat button, you went over to tests, and then it was option number five, one dash prop Z int, okay? And then when you did it, for P sub zero, you put in whatever was from the null, X was 320, and N was a thousand and it just, and it legit gives you everything you need. Okay. So do you see this first thing called Z? Look over here, our test statistics Z. So it's 1.380, okay, 1.380. And the P value is right here. It's under this next thing that's called P. It's 0 0.08 and I'll round it to a four, 0 0.084. Okay. Do we reject or fail to reject? Hmm. Why would you say reject? Is the p-value greater than or less than alpha? This is the thing you have to look at. Yeah, look, the p-value 0 0.084 is greater than 0 0.05. So it's greater than. So when the p-value is greater than, it's close, but it's greater than this, we actually fail to reject the null. That's okay. We fail to reject the null. This is because the p-value is greater than the level of significance. Okay. So what do you think here? So when I fail to reject the null, does evidence suggest that the proportion has increased or does, that, does evidence not support the hypothesis that the proportion has increased? So does evidence suggest that the proportion has gone up or does evidence suggest the, por the proportion has not gone up? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can't reject the null, okay? 
So right now, what we're saying is, look, the evidence does not suggest. that the proportion of adults age 25 years or older who have a bachelor's degree or higher has increased. And this is from 2010, because that was the value that we had from. So for whatever reason, over the last 10 years, we're just saying, oh, you know what? It, it doesn't look like it's changed. It looks like the same proportion of people are still, still going to college and graduating. What do you think? Not too bad? Oh, let me ask this. Is at least using the calculator not bad for this? What do you think? Yeah, it's a, is, it, is it still like, it's always the hard part is, yeah, just setting it up and then making the right conclusion? Yep, yep. And so we're just gonna practice it again. Just gonna keep practicing it. All right, everybody uh, ready for me to do the next two? Okay. All right. This one's a little tricky actually, okay? So I don't, know, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the news, but they've been arguing about another stimulus bill. Have you guys uh, heard about this? You know, a couple months ago we got, yeah, some people, that's okay if you haven't. Yeah, a couple months ago, I think it was March, April, May, I'm not sure, um, but they passed this huge stimulus bill where, you know, if you had an income under a certain level, you got a check for 1200 bucks and then they extended um, unemployment benefits. They did a lot of things in that, in that bill, okay. So they've been arguing about another round of uh, stimulus talks, okay? Um, this one, people would get a check that's a little bit lower, but uh, one thing they argue are arguing about in the um, bill is if there should be an economic stimulus to include support for state budgets, okay? Um, so if you guys don't mind, let me just kind of explain this a little bit of the economics because it's, it's just interesting, you know, like a lot of the states, um, if you guys, if you don't mind me explaining this, is that okay in there a little bit? I'm not trying to talk politics for all, I'm just trying to explain why we need this, okay? So like, um, if you didn't know, like the federal government doesn't need to balance its budget. Like every year it just runs deficits and deficits and deficits. And it can do that because it can just borrow money. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, like they say the United States is in all, you know, trillions of dollars of debts. It doesn't really matter all that much, honestly. Um, but states can't do that. Okay. States, states have to balance their budget every year. Okay. So when COVID hit, some of the states, uh, especially the blue states, right? Um, they went on lockdown and they lost a, a lot of revenue, okay? And so they can't like borrow money to, to make up for that lost revenue, okay? So the only way they can really get that lost revenue back is for the government, the federal government, which can borrow money to give them money. Anyways, so it's, it's really interesting. Um, but it's become very politicized if, if, if people, if they should, uh, the federal government should give the, give the states any money to help them out, okay? So that's the context behind this. I hope that was a little interesting to hear. Um, I'm not trying to t sway anybody's mind, but, you know, I'm just trying to tell you where it's coming from, okay? Okay, so the poll, you know, this poll came out and they asked adults, uh, do you support passage of an econ economic stimulus bill that includes support for state budgets. Okay, so right here, um, 
you're given the sample size, okay? Okay, this, this poll can talk to uh, 1,053 adults. Of those sampled, okay, 548 favored passage, okay? So what letter does this 548 represent? Well, it's the number of people who favor passage X. So that's, that's given there, okay? So look, just right off the bat, these are the things you're given. You're given the sample size. You're given X, which is 548. So you can find P hat yourself if you want, the proportion of people who favor passage. 548 divided by 1053. It looks like it's 0 0.52. It's roughly 52% of people, okay? Okay, roughly. So this is where it gets a little tricky. At the 5% level of significance, okay, so you're given alpha. Okay, does the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that a majority of US adults support passage? Hmm. Um, this is a little bit, does this seem a little bit weirder than the first problem? Because I'm asking you to, a majority supports passage. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah, it seems a little weird, right? Like, hmm. Well, let me ask you this. What, what constitutes a majority of people in terms of a percentage? What represents a majority? Being greater than what percentage? More than 50%. Say it louder. More than 50%. Yeah. So when I say, uh, can you conclude that a majority, that's exactly right. What a majority represents is more than 50%. Okay, just needs it just needs to be one person more than 50%. Okay. So now that you see that more than 50%, the words more than what type of test does this imply? Right tailed. Yeah, this is also going to be another right tailed test. Yeah. Okay, it's another you know, right tailed test. So this is just this is just the hardest part right here is just figuring out you know what's being asked and then how do we set up the test. But now that we've gotten to got an idea that it's going to be a right tailed test, we know what X and N are for this. Um, you know now we can go through and and conduct the test. Okay. So even though this poll came back with fifty two percentage of people support, you know an economic stimulus bill that included support for state budgets, you know, it, that's just, that's just one sample. Like, is that enough evidence to say for sure a majority? I'm not sure. Okay. So let's, let's actually go through it. All right. Is everybody okay if I go on? All right, so this is, again, this is the tricky part. All right, let's define the parameter. It's gonna be let P is equal to something. So we'll write that in in a second and we're gonna set up the test. So we all said it was a right tailed test. So it's P is equal to something versus, no way, no way, P is greater than that. All right, so what proportion are we investigating here? The proportion of people who what? Yep, that's it right there in the chat. The proportion of US adults that support passage that includes support for state budget. Yep. Awesome job. Support passage of stimulus bill. That includes support for state budgets. All 
Okay. I, you know what? I need some help on this. How am I going to set up the test? Like what number am I going to put in either the null or alternative? This is where it gets tricky. Hmm. So I want to show, you just ask yourself this, right? Like I want to show evidence that a majority, okay? So I want to show evidence that more than 50%, more than 50%. So what number am I going to put right here that I'm looking for? P is greater than what number here? So you don't want to put it. Yep, that's it. Delesky has it right there. Yep, yep. It's I want to show that it's greater than 50%. Boom, right here. Okay. So that's what I want to show evidence for. Okay, so then what am I going to assume in my null? If I want to show that it's greater than 50%, what assumption will I, I just make? Same number. It's always the same number. Yeah. Okay, it's always the same number right there. Okay. All right, so once you do that, now, now it's going to fall into place. Okay, um, level of significance. I've got it, it's 0 0.05. Okay, steps three and four done in calculator. Okay. So remember, it's the option stat. Scroll over to tests. And then what option number was it again? Option number five, yeah. One dash prop Z int. Yep, awesome, awesome. So let's go grab our trusty calculator. We're going to go stat. I'm going to scroll over to tests. It's option number five. And now what you're going to notice is you're going to have everything from the previous problem saved in there. So you just have to change that. Um, what's P sub zero here? Or P naught? Yep. Yep. You can put in 0 0.50. I like doing that, but then the calculator just knocks off the zero that you don't need. Uh, how many people said they supported it? Uh huh. How many people did we sample? Yep. And then just make sure that you know your your greater than is selected because this was a right tailed test too. And then you're going to scroll down to calculate. And you should see something like this. All right, how many people got this? Yeah. Okay. Anybody not get that? Everybody good? Hold on one second. Uh, all right, I'm sorry. Could you just explain how we get a piece of zero in the calculator? Yep. And Liliana, so watch again. I'm just going to reset my calculator. So every, so, it, and I'll do it again. Okay. So I'm going to press the stat button. So press stat. You're going to scroll over to tests and it's option number five, one dash prop Z int. So P sub zero comes from the null. So whatever you put up here, do you see where it says P is equal to 0 0.5? That's where P sub zero comes from, okay? So we're gonna put that there. Then X comes from here, the 548 who said that they supported it. 
And then N is the sample size, right? So they talked to 1,053 adults. And then you just have to make sure the alternative is set to P sub zero. So Daniela and Liliana, do you, do, you, do you have this plugged in on your calculator right here? Boom, 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 and boom. Okay, yep, awesome. Now let's go down to calculate. And do you see this now? Okay, good, 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 got it, yep. All right, so I'll, I'll even write it here so that we could see it, okay? In the calculator, P sub zero was 0 0.50, X was 548, and N was those 1,053 people, okay? So this first thing, Z is the test statistic, it's 1.325, 1.325. On your homework, you can just literally write this, compute the test statistic, and then you could just write Z sub zero is equal to 1.325. That's, you don't have to write out this formula. Compute the p-value. So the p-value here is next, it's 0 0.093. When I round it to three decimal places, 0 0.093. So what do we think? Do we reject or fail to reject? Okay, yeah, and why do we fail to reject? Uh, professor? Yeah. A question, why do you keep getting uh, on the P? The value on my calculator is 0 0.9074 and you're getting 0 0.925. Um, and I put the right number exactly what you have. Hold on. So you, let me go back. You did option number five. Yeah. Okay. And do you have greater than here? Um, wait. And then the only other thing, do you have 0 0.05 here? Yeah. Say that again. I do have 0 0.05. I mean, 0 0.5. Okay. You have point zero point five, and then you have 548. Uh, yes. And then 1053. Yes. And then you selected this greater than here. You have it as greater than? Yes. Okay. And then when you go down to calculate, you get you don't get those numbers. I do get it now. I have no idea what did I do wrong. It's okay. Yeah, a lot of times it's just like there's just like one little thing that's different or something. You know, like I wouldn't. You know. Okay. Um, yeah, just make sure to be very meticulous on the exam. Okay. okay so here we fail to reject. because the p-value is greater than the level of significance. So even though this poll came out and said seven or 52% of Americans support a passage that include support for state, bud state budgets, is there actually, does that provide sufficient evidence to say that for sure a majority of Americans support passage of this? Yeah, no, no. So that's, I, I always like doing an example like this. So you have to like be careful when you see polls that are like, oh, 52% of Americans, it must mean a majority. Like that's just not how, how it always works, you know? You know, like it's just, that's just, just one sample. Like it's just not strong enough evidence to say a majority. So let's say evidence does not suggest
that a majority does support passing. Does support passage of a bill with support for state budgets. All right. That uh, at least as the more we do it, like, is it, is it getting, do you guys feel like it's getting to the point where really it's just problem number one is the hardest, right? Like, you know, the calculator really does the rest. Hopefully you're, you're getting to that point. Okay. What do you guys say? One more for sure. Is ready for me to go to the next one? Um, I'm sorry, Professor. Why do you say that the, um, the evidence does not support the, that the majority? So what you're looking to show, right? So let me go back. Uh, we're looking to show that a majority of US supports passage. Okay. So that's the alternative that P is greater than 50. So that a majority. So when you fail to reject the null, what's going on here is you cannot say that P, you, you, there's no evidence to suggest that P is not equal to 0 0.50. So if it's equal to 0 0.50, that's not a majority. So the evidence does not suggest that a majority does support passage of the bill. That like, so when what's going on here is when you reject the null, evidence supports the alternative. When you fail to reject the null, evidence does not support the alternative. So let me just write that here. When you reject the null, evidence supports alternative. With the alternative hypothesis. And when you fail to reject the null, Evidence does not support the alternative. So like what you're seeing here is, is uh, you know, I failed to reject, so the evidence does not support this. So the evidence does not support that a majority believes passage of the bill. I know, I, I know it's a, I, it's confusing, right? Like, it, like it's the first time you're seeing this language and it's like, ah, I get it, I understand. But does that like help just a little bit there? All right. You ready for, is everyone okay if I move on and we'll do the last one? Okay, so this is three sentences. <laughs> okay. Um, do you guys notice I always make this error? A researcher, a researcher. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why I make that error in every problem. It's bad. Uh. It's good. I, you know what, to be honest with you, I do my, I do my PowerPoint slides on my child's nap time. So maybe it's just like, I'm trying to get them through before things go crazy. Okay. A researcher claims that 10% of the US population is left-handed, okay? Are there any left-handed people on the Zoom call today? Any lefties? I've got one lefty. My wife's left-handed. My sister's left-handed. Okay. I'm pretty sure my son is left-handed, but we'll, you know, that'll come later in life. So yeah, lefty. Okay. So a researcher claims, so they claim, okay, that 10% of the U.S. population is left-handed. Okay. 
So in a random sample of 750 individuals, it was found that 92 of them were left-handed, okay? So this is what you're given, okay? The sample size is 750 people. And how many of those people were left-handed? Yep. Okay, so that what that means is the sample proportion of people who were left-handed is this. So it's 0 0.1226. So I'm just gonna put 0 0.123. Okay, so it's a little higher, okay? So this is where it gets a, like weird, okay? So this researcher just said it's 10%. 10% of people are lefties, that's it. That's just, that, that's just the deal, okay? So does the data support the claim by the researcher? And it says use the 0 0.05 level of significance. This, this is a, this is the, I, uh, this problem setting it up is probably the most tricky out of the, out of the four problems we've done today. Okay. Um, is there like any key word in here, like increased or decreased? Is there any of that in there? Yep. The, nope. There's none of that. Okay. There's no like keyword that tells us. Okay. Um, does anybody have a guess how we'll set this problem up? Is it right tailed, left tailed, two tailed? What do you, what do you think? Left tailed. Okay. Two tailed. I got one left one, two. Why do you think it's a two tailed? I'm just curious. Guess, right? <laughs> because Matt it seemed like that was the obvious answer with it because it's a trick question. <laughs> yep, I get it. I get it. So the right answer is it is a two tailed test. Um, and, and when you go, let me set it up and I'll walk you through the next few steps and you'll see why. Okay. All right. Ugh. All right, so this is, just so we're clear, this is the claim we want to test, okay? The claim is literally 10% of, of population is left-handed. Okay. So remember, you're going to need a hypothesis. Um, hypothesis test is built around two statements, right? Okay. So the first statement is a statement of equality, the null. Okay. So think about this. He's claiming he or she, the researcher is claiming that the U.S. pop that ten percent of the U.S. population is left-handed. Okay, that sounds like a statement of equality. That sounds like something like p is equal to ten percent. That the proportion of people who are left-handed is ten percent. Okay. And then you have the alternative, okay? If we wanna say that he's wrong, okay? So the alternative is that the, that the person, that the researcher is not correct, that, that it is not 10%, okay? Does that sound like a, that I'm just saying it's not 10%, no way. Does that sound like a right-tailed, left-tailed or two-tailed? Yep, that's okay. That's that's good that that's something that you were thinking. Yeah. So like you can see that that that's how you're going to set this up. If you want to test somebody's claim and they're just like, "Hey, look. No, the not it, it is this proportion. That's it. It's 
Well, then be like, okay, that, that, that we'll, we'll start with that assumption. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show evidence that it's not that number. Okay, that, that's where this was heading towards. Okay. Everybody okay if I go on? Just got to go through the five steps. All right. What is the parameter we're investigating here? It's the proportion of the population that is what? Mm -hmm. Yep. Proportion that is left handed. And then this is how we're going to set up the test. Okay, look, the researcher says, you know what, 10% is, is left-handed. Okay, that's just what it is, right? And we're kind of saying like, I don't know. Okay, I'm not so sure that's right. So if you're going to claim that it's 10%, let's see if there's evidence to suggest that it's not 10% and that the researcher, he or she is wrong. So let's select the level of significance now. Well, that's given, boom. 0 0.05, it's always given. And now we're just gonna use our calculator. All right, remember it's the option stat, tests, and then option number five. All right, the one dash prop Z int. And you always just have to put in three things. You have to put in P0, X, and N. What, what, what is my P sub zero value for this? Where does it come from? Yep. It comes from whatever you put, put in the null right here. Boom, boom, boom. X. Uh, why, why did I do that? I put X bar here. <laughs> Jeez. Just by habit. X is 92. And N is that 750. Okay. So let's grab the calculator and do that. So let's hit stat. Let's scroll over to tests. And it's one dash prop Z test right here, number five. Oh my gosh, I wrote int. I'm just having a bad day, guys. I've been doing that a bunch. Holy cow. I'm sorry. I did that in every time. I'm having like a worst day ever. It's, 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 I'm, ha I'm having a really bad day. Shame on everybody for not catching me. Really, I did that on purpose to see who was who was catching. So really it's on you guys. So basically shame on you. One dash prophecy test. Sorry, I kept writing in. I don't know why I did that. So 0 0.10, X is 92, 750. And then you just have to make sure to change it to the alternative, not equals, okay, right here, not equal. So then I'm gonna scroll down to calculate. And how many people have this? Okay. All right, so we got the answer right there, okay. Z is equal to 2.069. So that's the test statistic, 2.069. And then the p-value is 0 0.039, okay? When I round to three decimal places, 0 0.039. So
So what do we do? Reject or fail to reject? Yeah, 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 yeah. We reject the null because the p-value is less than the level of significance. Okay, so what that means is evidence is supporting this. Okay, so evidence is, is supporting that the proportion of people who are left-handed is not equal to 10%. So evidence supports the alternative statement that the proportion of the US population that is left-handed is not 10%, is not equal to 10%. And that's it. And in reality, actually, the, the real proportion is something like 12, 13%, per, I mean, percentage. Okay, it's, it's, it is higher than 10% in the real world. What'd you think? Not too bad, terrible. I'm ready for the semester to be over. Yeah, me too. All right, let me just stop the recording.